There is a reliance on youth entrepreneurship in Nigeria, which has somehow become cliched. It almost looks like the government has been waiting, almost in vain, for this to catch up. Yet, in view of the large youth entrepreneurship numbers and the robotization of the workspace, Nigeria has no choices but to hope on its youthful demographic to step up and deliver. But how is this going to happen? How is it going to pan out? Granted that we need to tap into that youthful energy, the larger superstructure that can enable sustainable entrepreneurship are not there. For example, our steel sector. We have been unable to optimize our steel sector, for example, so that, like it happens in China and Germany, we can have a proliferation of small and micro-scale industries that produce secondary and tertiary products and even engage the export market massively, because that's what happens in those countries. Still, the hope lies in our youthful energy. However, many of our youths are losing hope. And as they say, they are jackpying in numbers these days. Is this good enough? What are the options open to these youths? How do we get them to be less restless and angry and to see opportunities in Nigeria? In fact, recently, about 200 people were conferred with Nigerian citizenship this week, in fact, in a ceremony attended by the president himself. What have these former foreigners, because they are no longer foreigners, what have they seen in Nigeria that our youth are not seeing? And how can we bring some equity into the equation and douse the tension and the frustration that leads to this reaction among our people, especially our young people? Joining us to speak to this today is Honorable Lula De Omoni, a youth entrepreneur and also a, a, a serving politician. So welcome, Olu about yeah. this, you know, I mean, welcome to The Nationalist, our show on Trust TV, you know. I'll just shoot direct. What, what are the challenges facing the youth these days in Nigeria? Yeah. Laundry list of those challenges. I mean, <laughs> you are almost a youth, you know, but I, I probably still give you that youthful platform. Um, well, basically, for me, when you look at youth for Nigeria, one is there is no dream. No dream? No dream. Oh. No dream. That's serious. Um, when I say dream, I mean a national dream. Mm. There's nothing to want to fight for. Mm. There's nothing to want to live for. As an average youth, you just uh. want to survive. Mm. So then, who's responsible for that dream? Who's supposed to give us that dream? Maybe well, I, I, okay, maybe I think you're talking about something like the American dream. Yeah, you know? when you, this is what a Nigerian yeah, there, there, There's an to ownership be. of the country by everybody. Hmm. which is, this is our country, this is what it should be, hmm. and this is what we should live for. Hmm. But here is... I will also challenge you on that, you know, I'm, I'm not sure everybody will be able to sign up at once 100%. Because even in America that we're talking, there are Texans who believe that they want to go, there are all those yeah. hillbillies, all those yes. uh, National Rifle Association people who believe that they want to be on there, they are crazy, but they are what they call the Amish people, those ones are still living in 18th century, mm -hmm. they don't use any technology, they ride horses, horses, uh, right. horse, horse drunk carriage, and so, uh, uh, perhaps, is it not that maybe, if we have that dream, then somebody should be constantly selling the dream, and more and more people should be signing on, though we will not achieve 100%. Say, since 1960, if a dream has been projected, I believe a large percentage and the youths who are now you today, who were once children, yes. who have been told about this dream, mm. a larger percentage of these children becoming youth will, will, will be living for that dream, that dream now. Living for the dream. So right now, they are not living for the dream. We're all trying to survive. Live for yourself. Mm. You know, provide your water. Provide your light. Provide everything you can provide to put a good environment, create and a good so. environment mm. for your family. Mm. You know, so there is no national dream to keep us together. An average youth does not even trust the fellow youth. You know, when they say the fraud level amongst the youth is heavy, we'll go back to how did money become the in thing for an yes, average youth? Yes, the value changed. The value changed from once you have money, regardless mm. of the source, the community, the society will put you there and respect you. And that has affected, you know, the youth, we were children when we had certain names, we were fraud stars. But these fraud stars became superstars, wow. invested in movies and all those things. Mm. And some looked at him and said, if I can be like this guy, you know, so what we had to focus on 
we're not the good guys in the bank, but these bad guys in the political sector, music sector, I mean, we were doing the shady stuff, but we're being celebrated by the community. Wonderful. See, but what, I, what you have just said now, just, you know, kind of resonates with me. And I'm seeing it like Nigeria is like, a, you see, in economics, we are taught that running a household, a company, or a country, basically the same, the same principles. Whether you're talking about frugality, planning for tomorrow, developing yourself, you develop That's an true. individual, yeah. a company also thinks about developing itself, diversifying, doing bigger things. So also a country, you know. So that's what we've been taught. But um, we, it, it seems, what you're saying in essence is that Nigeria is like a company without a mission, vision. No goals. Uh -huh. You know that mission, vision statement, statement that you have value to statement. As a client, as, that, as a staff, yeah. and you know this is what mm, this company is all about. Exactly. And you can defend so your we company So we're anywhere. saying that we don't know what Nigeria is about, really. No, no, we don't. Wow. I, I don't. As... Uh, but now, but the, still, the issue is still, whose responsibility? How we get, okay, like they say, you know, maybe it's a Swahilian um, um, adage, you know, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. Yes. The next best time is what? Is today. Now. Now. A national dream. So who do that? Who should do that? Well, we're running into a season, you know, where we have lots of candidates coming out, election is mm. approaching. I think we should go for anybody who has, who is intentional about creating a national image. Mm. Anybody who is intentional, because when you want to create a national mm. image, you're not talking about four years. Now, this, this, these are deep issues. Uh, um, for, of all the, some of the presidential candidates that I've been speaking, even though we're not talking politics here, but I've not seen them, you know, intellectualize at that level. Like, you know, what is the Nigerian image, you know, actually for the you. But let's move on to, you know, another, another question. The, the, if you say that, you know, we don't even know what Nigeria is about, could we then say that the Nigerian Youth Entrepreneurship Project or experiment, is it working? You know what? Or what is it all about? Is it a case of everybody is just hustling, trying to sell something or the other? What, what exactly? You know, about? entrepreneurship has been brought down to a place where I take money, buy stuff, sell mm -hmm. stuff. But it's not like that. My my business mentor, Michael Igiba, um, Michael is, who? Igiba okay. is, is, is a business developer. He's into developing small-scale business. Yeah. And I learned from them that it's not about just buying and selling. It's about understanding that you're in a system to create value, not for a time, not for a season, yeah. mm. but a projection of this service will grow. Mm. So if you say we're investing in entrepreneurs, we're giving them certain amounts, but there is no monitoring process. There's no feedback process. Mm. There's no accountability process. It's not just the money. It's how do we know how this money is going. Okay, you've been giving a million naira to go start a business. Yeah. Mm. Is there going to be um, a quarterly report? Would there be trainings? Mm. Would there be boot camps where we can talk about the business and how it's going? Would there be mentorship over the years? If you tell me now that 20 million, go and start your business, three months internship with Dangote, I'll take three months internship. Yeah. Mm. Mm. But if you bring an average youth mm. to five million mm. and five month internship with Dangote, an average youth will take that. Was it five million? Because look like that if I have five million, I buy, I sell, I buy, I sell. But that, that's not the thing about entrepreneurs. So for me, most of the entrepreneurship program that comes out is more of a giveaway program. Yeah. You give money to people who at the end, some of them don't even use it for the business. Because you're going into a business where I mean, I respect someone who is Tony Elumelu for their foundation and the grants because over the years I studied them, I've seen few people come out of that because they have. And also, uh, Madam Indibi, Leap Africa, for what they do with training entrepreneurs. I was at their 20th anniversary last week in Lagos. These guys are not just giving out grants, but they are doing follow-up. Yeah. So there has to be strong follow-up. Follow-up is the most important, not the money. So essentially, follow essentially the, the, the youth entrepreneurship um, idea, essentially maybe the ones that are promoted by government, they need a lot of... The funding, um, there should be small funding for the business, so much funding to make sure that the business grow. Yeah. Consultants, I mean, different um, um, organizations that they would engage to make sure that this one million can become a million dollars in 15 years. Yeah. Now, it would take certain 
information that the business needs to grow. Now, let, let's talk about the jackpot phenomenon. <laughs> I wonder why what I see you are still doing in this country. You haven't jackpot. No, no, I'm staying here. Yeah, but everybody seems to be jackpotting, you know, with their entire families and so on. And they say there's no hope in Nigeria and there's no opportunities or the, the country stresses them up, you know, and so on. Well, what's uh, your idea on this? There's a saying that a, a, a lizard in Nigeria will not become an alligator in any other country. Uh -huh. And, you know, when you look at the rate at which most of this country open up, then you understand that one, I've, I've had friends who had left, some still, <laughs> some people still left some weeks ago, but I engaged a few of them. There and here, I realized how much money they put in leaving the country, and that's amazing to me. Why I'll put up thirty million naira? Jesus, no. And it's something that I realized that someone has thirty million naira, thirty million naira cash, and then we run out of leave Why? this country? It shows that you just want to be comfortable. Oh, okay. You're not looking at having maybe an extraordinary life where people can benefit from you. Exactly. Because if you have 30 million in Nigeria and you're focused, you know, I was joking with a friend. I said, how much did Jim Ovia use in certain Stanley's bank? We hear it, 20 million. There are other artists that are 20 million and bought a house with it. So it will be said of them that they have 30 million, but they left the country. Some go to the length of selling all their properties to and leave the country. And in fact, some defraud people too, yeah. and then they run. And now I know that some of them are there right now and wishing they didn't take the step. Why I said national image this? Most of this country has projected an image from the movies and the news. Exactly. And they did not show us realities. Hmm. So people are getting into a system where they now realize hmm. that the TV is different from reality. Someone was telling someone, come to Canada, come to Canada. After a while, the person was like, you know what? I need people around me here, man. It's boring. Oh, it's man. Lonely. Yes. I saw. Like, you see, people moving into a lonely YouTube. environment. You see wow. someone become 40 years of age that, you know, in party, even if you don't get money, your guys will come up and turn up with you. And you see them alone with cake in the house or just one boring. <laughs> and you're like, you're wondering, ah, this guy, this is 40, man. In Nigeria, man, your guys will turn up, forget the economy and all that, break the bottles and just have that fun and celebrate with you. So you can imagine someone who is 40 and is that lonely on that day that he knows that like, to have been a solid gig at home. And I say this with all honesty. Someone said to me, he said, we came here two years ago and we're still under asylum because we wow. filed for asylum. Yeah. Now you can imagine what our okay. people are becoming there. But nobody is telling them the truth about this story. Raise the money, get the money, go. When you get there, you also, you, you also. Now, the truth about it is we are very, very creative and we have energy. A Nigerian will survive anywhere. But I keep saying this truth. That same energy that you want to take there, if you concentrate here, yeah, regardless of how it is, you will blow. And like they say, you know, we, we have a country to build. And only Nigerians will build Nigeria. And just this morning, I was reading something in that direction. And I started imagining that, look, indeed, when they say to build Nigeria, if we're going to all have skyscrapers all over the country, we will have to build those skyscrapers. If yes. we are going to have the energy, the electricity, oh, the that. road, the bridges, whatever it is that attracts us, you know, we will have to do it. Um, anyway, we are going to go on a short break. Um, and we've been talking to Honorable Lula Deomoni, uh, a youth entrepreneur as well as a politician. Uh, kindly stay with us.
Welcome back to your show, The Nationalist, and we'll be discussing the youth entrepreneurship and the challenges of the youth in Nigeria in general uh, with Honorable Olula De Omoni. So, yeah, welcome back. And um, so we're discussing this, um, this jackpot phenomenon, which I must also say seems to be a bit confined largely to the south of Nigeria, even though many Northerners I know today are also thinking in that direction, especially with the insecurity challenges in parts of the north, which is uh, highly unfortunate. But how do we convince ourselves? How do we convince the average person who is going that maybe there's more opportunities here and perhaps the medium to long term prospects are here? Prospects to, you know, when Abraham Maslow did his um, uh, hierarchy of needs, he, he talked about, you know, those hygiene factors, the things that the human being needs. You want to be able to feed yourself, hold, clothe Put yourself and so on. But after you are able to do that, you have a job, then you think in terms of self-actualization. And self-actualization is to say that that's when, why people go into politics, for example, say, okay, at least I became somebody in this mm -hmm. life. And eventually, in fact, the less publicized work of, 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 of you know, Maslow, he wrote about what they call self-transcendence, in which case that is when you stop living for yourself. Well, you imagine all the uh, Mother Teresa's of this world, uh, which other example could I, even people like Warren Buffett, they're getting to that level, say, what do I need this money for? Let me give Charity. it all out, you yeah. know, to people. And because again, I think like it happened with Alexander the Great, was he the one? When he died, you know, he, 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 as big, as rich as he was, he told, the, the, he, before he died, he told them that, look, when I die, when you bury me in that coffin, I want you to leave my hand out of the coffin. So I want my, so that people know that I brought nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take nothing from this world. But how do we convince this youth to stop carrying 30 million naira to, to go and get another? And in fact, one of the biggest businesses of recent time, people have been calling me, that people have called me so often to come and get um, some other country, maybe Antigua. Citizenship of Antigua, of St. Kitts and Nevis, of all sorts of funny places. And I'm wondering why. And they tell you that their passport has access to this country. Yeah, to this, this country. country. And you have to, I, I, I was approached and I was told that I needed uh, maybe $170,000 and I was going to get this citizenship. The money will be working and all that. Uh, for me, for me, it's, it's not too late, but it's not now. And I'll say why I said that, because it's now a big business. Yeah. So... You want to go into a system that is now a business. Hmm. So first is you want to take business away from certain people who have seen Jack Mine as their venture. We can help you relocate. Yeah, exactly. We can help you get a job. They set up a company on it. They paid rent. They have staff hmm. here. Yeah. And they are marketing to people. Yeah, but they are here to go. So why 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 are they not there then? So I mean, what now, are they? What they see people here? don't go there. Is now like a gorilla has to come into this market, hmm. and that gorilla is still the federal government. Okay. It's like hmm. telling because we're not even hearing anything from government. It's in not this like let, let me break it down to an average. It's like there's this fine chick hmm. and their guys. Hmm. Now she needs to decide. Yeah. This guy is saying, "See, look at this car." Look at this, look at that. <laughs> Let's go. That guy is the abroad. This is the federal government. Mm. We shot the car and t-shirt. Mm. Wanting to make a promise of the future to the same mm. day. Mm. Sir, if it was your daughter. <laughs> uh, well, if it was my daughter, I'll, I'll think carefully. Though, you think carefully. You I want to engage want the guy to in go with the, Exactly. That's where I'm going. And see whether he has a, a vision. How will that for lady himself. engage yeah. the guy in short? So... I'm saying that a national image, now federal government needs to go change, though they have it at home. So the guy needs to quickly go okay, home. Okay, go and change then that come back with the car uh, also. See, we, uh, no even worry, if he doesn't know. have a car, let him uh, take Uber and dress, come back. You know, yes. just come back and mm, sit on this table. Give me the and vision. Go. Let me know what you're all Then about. she yeah. can even engage. Yeah. Now, for an average you to engage, I engage them from another perspective you know, on why they need to go or why they need to stay. Hmm. But right now, right now, I see people in Lagos running away saying insecurity. Then I'm wondering what should people in the north do? Exactly. 
in Lagos. They're saying, ah, the same insecurity is high. And, uh, so you know, then, but, but do they also understand, these people who say this thing, do they also understand the challenges that some of those other countries go through? I mean, I have friends in, there was, I, have, I had a Facebook friend in the US who we chatted today and the next day I saw the news. Somebody, no, it wasn't suicide. Some Something. guy went to his house and shot him. You know, uh, uh, there's another one who I think he had to lose his eyes. He went into a, a 7-Eleven and some boys were robbing there. They guns all over the place. Same America, they shot him. He's lucky to be alive. You know, and many more. You know, so, but we, we think, we tend to have this simplistic idea about life. Movie. And, you know, about life, maybe the movies, the yes, movies. that is meant to be, you know, is, you don't even have to stress. You want to go to a place that has been laid. But the America and Co. are going through, are where they are today, because people have spilled their blood and tears and Investments in order to... their life. To, their life. Their life. Oh, wait, but let's even say that I think the biggest culprit may be those people who steal Nigeria's money and take abroad. And from the social media, they make us feel like, man, you guys, the real life. You know, sir, one of the things is, the life we see abroad from some Nigerians, the money they used to, you know, show us that life, and money is from there. Exactly. No money made there. Yes. So you oh, see, you can't make money that easily there. And all that, a Nigerian, and a friend of mine was talking to me, and she said that you know that I I know some people here who live, who share a room, but if you see their car, you will never believe that they are sharing a room. Hmm. You know, we forget that there's a mortgage system that helps you exactly. buy things. Oh, yeah, yeah. In a, that, that's a different engagement <laughs> entirely. Something I'm going to, I'm started writing on it. The, the amount of cash flow that you need as a Nigerian to live a good life compared to what you need there. You know, I mean, you want to even, you, you are throwing all those big parties, your birthday, your graduation and all that. Cash money, you're buying a car, cash money, you're buying a house, cash money. money. In those places, nobody buys a car. We cash, everything is on pay, pay, pay okay. as you go. And all of that, you pay a certain amount. But let me take it to, but in all of this, about 200 people became citizens of Nigeria last week. The president was there, you know, in attendance. What is it they saw that the most of us are not seeing? The future. They saw the future. The future. Many of them are Lebanese, or not only Lebanese, you know. You other people, Chinese. even Chinese. Future. Yeah. They saw the future. Indians. What we refuse to see. There's a very, very nice guy called Weber Boa who wrote the history of football in Nigeria. He's just boy, white, Dutch boy, Dutch man. You know, I mean, he's an old person, maybe 50 something years old. And he's been saying, you know, this guy is so Nigerian. I've not seen anyone that's more Nigerian than him. Speaks out very friendly. A Dutch guy. Is but he? has been struggling to get this Nigerian uh, citizenship. He said they didn't answer. I don't know whether he was one of those people. You know, the, the truth about, about it is, I, I tell my friend, I said, I've seen the future of this country and it's green and anything green is very fruitful. Hmm. And that, that's one reason why I'm staying, that I'm sure in the next 10, 15 years, the same people who, who left will come back and be amazed or when we Hopefully. go to holiday. There's a lot of work and, though. Yeah. But we will do the work. It's mm -hmm. just like a farmer who everybody sees bare ground, but the guy can see his harvest. Hmm and decides to start planting. Hmm. It may look as if it's mad, but it says, no, I will till this ground. Hmm. It will take time. He's seen the harvest already. Hmm. It will take time. Yeah. By the time the harvest come, those who saw bare ground give him money to partake from the harvest. Yeah. So that is the journey we are on. So well, that- Have we started that journey? Though, yeah, some of us have started. Mm. But as a nation, yeah. we are yet to enter into that journey where we can now begin to sell the beer land as an harvest. It's important that we sell. It's, it's a beer land to most youth right now. But if we can help them see the harvest, then we can see them stay. And say, so, okay, let's steal the ground. Most of them can't steal the ground. That's the truth. You see someone with good job, earning good salary. The people who are jackpining are not the ag bureau or the street boy. These are people who earn money in this country. Who now say, I can earn a lot better. You know, my friend told me how much they pay per month, $2,600. When I calculated it, I'm like, that's my rent for a year. Mm. But that 2,600, taxes, bills. I mean, 
I'm saying you'll be lucky if you have five hundred dollars at the end that, of the day. And I'm that. like, you pay a house three bedroom flat for two thousand six hundred dollars, mm. earning about sixteen dollars or something dollars per hour, and you really, really would invest time. I say Nigeria is the only place where big miracles happen. That you meet someone today who is ordinary, just awesome, yeah, and in six months he's a big boy. And when he sees and he says, ah, it was where I was working, oh. They were talking about this thing. I said, I can't do it. They tried me. I did the first supply. They liked it. They told me to try again. I did the second supply. Before you knew it, I started ah, supplying. Well, I said, you know, the point is this, uh, Ulu. <laughs> Some Nigerians are really making it. Look, the dentists are using Lagos. Our story eventually came out. You know, that's the, what's her name? You know, Choice Dental, I think. They make millions every day. Just, just a dentist shop, you know. Wow. You know, and, and that's it. So I mean, not talk of all those guys that do the entertainment industry who are making a lot. But unfortunately, they still send all the money out. Last question. Last question. There's so much to explore on this. You know, we probably will not have enough time. Like, the leadership space and the youth, you know, because I think except you will get involved in the leadership space before you can sell. This kind of dream that you have painted so vividly, you know, we need to sell it. And don't don't take it for granted that everybody knows what's what. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So how do we sell these and how do the youth get involved? In one minute, you have to answer this question. How do we get involved more in the leadership space? Okay, I'll say in one minute. It took me 11 years to become a counselor. Hmm. And people would always say, oh, I like your, you're so dogged, your tenacity. Oh, everything, everything. But during the 11 years, my story can actually make someone cry. But I stood there. And I kept on investing in the process, in the people, because I knew that one day, mm. you see, the one day process is the leadership. We cannot say politics is bad, this is bad, and stay outside. Yeah. Mm. We must get involved, and regardless of the win and all that, keep pushing. Mm. One day, I'm talking as a counselor. I will talk as so a So it's government. about perseverance. So it's about yeah. perseverance mm. and staying. We cannot watch from outside and judge. Exactly. We must be part of the process. Fantastic. Thank you so much for, uh, you know, your time today. And Thank you for, very much, You know, at very short notice. Thank you so much. And just for clarification, when we say Jakba, I hope maybe the word, I hope it does not make it into the Oxford Dictionary next year because I know they always add new words, you know, that become so popular. But Jackpot means um, to run away from the country for those who may have been lost from what we've been discussing uh, much earlier. Um, once again, thank you very much for staying tuned to your show, The Nationalist, and see you next week.